How would you like to have some adorable vintage inspired Halloween decorations? Of course you would. Stick around and I'll show you how to make them. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I'm not talking about Christmas. I do love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. <laughs> now, I don't really do a whole lot of decorating seasonally, mostly because I just don't have a lot of things to decorate with. But this year I really wanted to do some Halloween craft projects. Some of them maybe be wearable, some jewelry or some brooches. I also wanted to make some Halloween decor for our house. So today I think what I'm gonna do is make a little decorative sign to put up on top of the mantle. I am going to make this out of cardboard and paint. The whole point is to not buy more stuff. Generally my theme is vintage Halloween surprising I know. I think I want to do something witchy for this piece. Maybe like a, an old-timey kind of ad. So like maybe like broom rides 50 cents. <laughs> maybe we change the layout a little bit. So well I could go traditional and do like a black and white kind of thing but I feel like it needs some gold or something too. So let's try Let's try that. All right, so it is the next day. Don't mind my very, 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 very messy table. Yikes. So I've got my projector set up over here with my finished artwork, and I will link to that in the description, my projector. I've had it for a few years now. Works great, it's a little bit noisy. Just sounds like a fan, but it's it's awesome for doing artwork and even showing movies and whatnot. Anyway, I have my image projected up on my wall. I'm gonna get some cardboard and, you know, I'll probably just hold it up because I don't really wanna put tape on my wall. <laughs> There's a little knob on the back of the projector that's really important to adjust so that your image is, it's down down there. It adjusts it to where the image is completely straight and not like tilted back or front like that. So uh, let's do it. I didn't square off my cardboard beforehand. I'm just gonna do that later. Start really quickly sketching. I think my coffee's ready so I will be right back. Mm. Cheers. Ideally this is something you want to do in the dark. It doesn't have to be pitch black but darker it is, the more you'll be able to see. Don't feel like you have to make this perfect because you're still going to use your reference image or the reference image when you're actually painting. You don't wanna spend all your time on this part when the painting is really more important too. This is just your guide. So another way you could create guides would be if you don't have a projector, you can print out and tile the pages together and then you can use a tracing wheel, like for sewing, trace around all the details, or you could use kind of a dull pencil or a pen even, trace around the details, and then that would create an impression into the cardboard that you can then use for a guide. And then, you know, of course you can use different colors too, like don't feel like you have to use these same colors. You could, you know, you could make it orange and kind of a cream color with like a dark green writing, that would be really cool. I could think of a lot of different color ways that would work for this. So you could totally make one of these and have it be, you know, fresh, really clean lines. Or you could do that and then you could distress it, which would be really cool to make it look actually, you know, antique or vintage. Alrighty, I have finished the sketch. So you can see it says broom rides, 50 cents. So from here, I'm going to square it off. Then we can start painting. So let's do it. So using a yardstick and a pencil, I marked out about 11 by 17 onto my cardboard. And then I used a box cutter very carefully and cut along those lines. When you cut something like this, you want to go over multiple times. Don't try to muscle through and cut it once. Make sure you always cut away from you. All right, so before we can start painting, we need to get our palette ready. So if we look back at my reference, that's kind of a goldy yellow. 
and black and white. So that's really all we need. So I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna use the white and the black just straight out of the tube, but I do need to mix a color for the yellow, the gold. I don't know if you've ever painted with acrylics, but a lot of times yellows are kind of transparent. So I did buy this very opaque yellow, not for this project, but just in general, and it makes such a huge difference. But if you can't get your hands on a really opaque yellow, then paint whatever is gonna be a yellow white first, and then you'll paint yellow on top of that, and it's like a nice base coat. It's sort of like when you do your makeup and you use like a primer, like a lighter primer for your eyelids so that your eyes really pop when you put the shadow on. Same concept. Really, I'm just going to squeeze out a whole bunch of black and white. And if you need to come back to this, you can put some plastic wrap on top and it will keep it. So the yellow, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna take some vermilion just because I want to warm it up a little. I don't want, I don't want to make orange. So this is kind of somewhere in between red and orange. I'll just take a tiny bit of that. Uh, I don't know where my palette knife is, so I'm just gonna use the edge of this, or the end of this brush. I do also have some brown that I pulled over. I think I might add some brown to this. Yeah, so I have a, a burnt sienna, and it's important when you mix colors you always add it on the side and then just add a little bit in before going right into your main color you're mixing because you can't really take it out once you put too much in. You have to go back and add more of your base color and I don't wanna waste my paint. <laughs> it looks like mustard. Uh, I think I need a little bit more vermilion. All right, mm, I'm happy with that. So just kind of scrape off as much as I can of the excess. I'm an artist, I'm a little bit messy. Actually, I'm a lot messy, <laughs> ask my husband. So what I'm gonna do is actually start with the white and the yellow. I'm gonna use a small brush for the lettering and all the little designs. And I probably will have to go back and refine it later after I've added the black, but that's okay. I'm gonna wet my brush just a tiny bit, but I'm not going to be using a lot of water because we're painting directly onto cardboard and I don't want it to soak in a whole bunch of water, but the little bit of water on the brush will help to kind of make things glide a little more smoothly. All right, now remember our reference, we're kind of going for like a hand-painted sign look, so if it's not completely perfect, that's fine. I can see the graphite kind of poking through, coming through the white paint, so I definitely will have to kind of touch this up again after I put the black paint on, but it's okay. This is just kind of the first layer. Most of the time acrylics involve painting with multiple layers, at least in my experience. Painting is about building up layers of color and value. And most of the time you're not gonna get it the first time exactly how you want it. Just remember that this is supposed to be fun and it's not supposed to be perfect because it's handmade and handmade things are awesome. So just have fun with it. Nobody's grading you on this, you know? I mean, I can grade you if you want me to, but... <laughs> And when you're painting, ideally, you don't wanna start from down here. If you're right-handed, you don't wanna start from the bottom right corner because then you're gonna have to reach over what you've already painted. So it's best to kind of work down and to the right, or if you're left-handed, down and to the left. And you don't even have to have it right side up when you're painting it. You could flip it upside down if that helps you. Sometimes it helps to turn something upside down if you find that you're struggling with getting proportions right. Kind of tricks your eye and your brain 
stop thinking and start seeing. I'm just using a pretty small brush for the outlines of everything and then I will use a slightly thicker brush to fill in. And you know what, if you, if you finish it and it, you just really hate how it looks, you don't have to post about it, you don't have to share it, it never has to see the light of day. But if you wanna try, I would encourage you to try. I think now I will turn on a TV show. <laughs> I didn't film the whole process here, but as you can see, I just carefully went and filled in black everywhere where that was supposed to be. And then for all the little characters, I got smart and actually used a white lead. You could use a white colored pencil when making your guides so that the graphite doesn't mix with the white and make gray. I didn't film the pumpkin painting process. <laughs> only because I thought by now you'd probably get the point, but I did start with the yellow and then used the vermilion on top of that to make a nice kind of textured orange. Then I very carefully used my X-Acto knife to cut around the characters. Well, what do you think? I think they're super vintage looking and I'm so happy with how they turned out. They're so much fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna actually offer the skull as a free download and if you wanna buy the rest of the designs for your own personal use, then look down below for that link. I would greatly appreciate the support. Let me know if you decide to make any of these for your own house. You could use cardboard, I mean, you could use plastic, you could use whatever, you could use poster board, sky's the limit. <laughs> I challenge you this Halloween season, or really this whole holiday season, to use what you have on hand, buy less stuff, and make more stuff. Well, I hate to do this, but I gotta run. Got a, got a broom ride to give. <laughs> See you next time.